Jack Kevorkian. Jacob Jack Kevorkian was an American pathologist, euthanasia activist, painter, author, composer, and instrumentalist. He is best known for publicly championing a terminal patient's right to die via physician assisted suicide. He claimed to have assisted at least 130 patients to that end. He was often known by the nickname Dr. Death, and famously said, Dying is not a crime. In 1999, Kvorkian was arrested and tried for his direct role in a case of voluntary euthanasia. He was convicted of second degree murder and served eight years of a 10 to 25 year prison sentence. He was released on parole on June 1, 2007, on condition he would not offer advice nor participate or be present in the act of any type of suicide involving euthanasia, to any other person, as well as neither promote nor talk about the procedure of assisted suicide. As an oil painter and a jazz musician, Kvorkian marketed limited quantities of his visual and musical artwork to the public. Early Life and Education Kvorkian was born in Pontiac, Michigan to Armenian immigrants. His father Levin was born in the village of Parson, near Erzurum, and his mother Satanik was born in the village of Govdan, near Shivas. His father moved from Turkey in 1912 and made his way to Pontiac, where he found work at an automobile foundry. Satanik fled the Armenian Genocide of 1915, finding refuge with relatives in Paris, and eventually reuniting with her brother in Pontiac. Levin and Satanik met through the Armenian community in their city, where they married and began their family. The couple had a daughter, Margaret, in 1926, followed by son Jacob, who later earned the nickname Jack from an American teacher who misread the birth certificate, and, lastly, the third child, Flora. Kvorkian, who taught himself German and Japanese, graduated from Pontiac Central High School with honors in 1945 at the age of 17. In 1952, he graduated from the University of Michigan Medical School in Ann Arbor. He completed residency training in anatomical and clinical pathology and briefly conducted research on blood transfusion. Unable to function effectively as a hospital pathologist, Kvorkian left the active practice of medicine and, for a time, was even homeless. Kvorkian never married. Career Over a period of decades, Kvorkian developed several controversial ideas related to death. In a 1959 journal article, he wrote, Senior doctors at the University of Michigan, Kvorkian's employer, opposed his proposal and Kvorkian chose to leave the university rather than stop advocating his ideas. Ultimately, he gained little support for his plan. He returned to the idea of using death row inmates for medical purposes after the Supreme Court's 1976 decision in Gregg v. Georgia reinstituted the death penalty. He advocated harvesting the organs from inmates after the death penalty was carried out for transplant into sick patients, but failed to gain the cooperation of prison officials. As a pathologist at Pontiac General Hospital, Kvorkian experimented with transfusing blood from the recently deceased into live patients. He drew blood from corpses recently brought into the hospital and transferred it successfully into the bodies of hospital staff members. Kvorkian thought that the U.S. military might be interested in using this technique to help wounded soldiers during a battle, but the Pentagon was not interested. In the 1980s, Kvorkian wrote a series of articles for the German journal Medicine and Law that laid out his thinking on the ethics of euthanasia. In 1987, Kvorkian started advertising in Detroit newspapers as a physician consultant for death counseling. His first public assisted suicide, of Janet Atkins, a 54-year-old woman diagnosed in 1989 with Alzheimer's disease, took place in 1990. Charges of murder were dropped on December 13, 1990, as there were, at that time, no laws in Michigan regarding assisted suicide. In 1991, however, the state of Michigan revoked Kvorkian's medical license and made it clear that given his actions, he was no longer permitted to practice medicine or to work with patients. According to his lawyer Jeffrey Figer, Kvorkian assisted in the deaths of 130 terminally ill people between 1990 and 1998. 
In each of these cases, the individuals themselves allegedly took the final action which resulted in their own deaths. Kvorkian allegedly assisted only by attaching the individual to a euthanasia device that he had devised and constructed. The individuals then pushed a button which released the drugs or chemicals that would end his or her own life. Two deaths were assisted by means of a device which delivered the euthanizing drugs intravenously. Kvorkian called the device a thanatron, death machine, from the Greek thanatos meaning death. Other people were assisted by a device which employed a gas mask fed by a canister of carbon monoxide, which Kvorkian called the Mesitron, mercy machine. Criticism and Kvorkian's Response According to a report by the Detroit Free Press, 60% of the patients who committed suicide with Kvorkian's help were not terminally ill, and at least 13 had not complained of pain. The report further asserted that Kvorkian's counseling was too brief, with at least 19 patients dying less than 24 hours after first meeting Kvorkian, and lacked a psychiatric exam in at least 19 cases, five of which involved people with histories of depression, though Kvorkian was sometimes alerted that the patient was unhappy for reasons other than their medical condition. In 1992, Kvorkian himself wrote that it is always necessary to consult a psychiatrist when performing assisted suicides because a person's mental state is of paramount importance. The report also stated that Kvorkian failed to refer at least 17 patients to a pain specialist after they complained of chronic pain, and sometimes failed to obtain a complete medical record for his patients with at least three autopsies of suicides Kvorkian had assisted with showing the person who committed suicide to have no physical sign of disease. Rebecca Badger, a patient of Kvorkian's and a mentally troubled drug abuser, had been mistakenly diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. The report also stated that Janet Atkins, Kvorkian's first patient, had been chosen without Kvorkian ever speaking to her, only with her husband and that when Kvorkian first met Atkins two days before her assisted suicide he made no real effort to discover whether Ms. Atkins wished to end her life, as the Michigan Court of Appeals put it in a 1995 ruling upholding an order against Kvorkian's activity. According to The Economist, studies of those who sought out Dr. Kvorkian, however, suggest that though many had a worsening illness, it was not usually terminal. Autopsies showed five people had no disease at all little over a third were in pain. Some presumably suffered from no more than hypochondria or depression. In response, Kvorkian's attorney Jeffrey Feiger published an essay stating, I've never met any doctor who lived by such exacting guidelines as Kvorkian. He published them in an article for the American Journal of Forensic Psychiatry in 1992. Last year he got a committee of doctors, the Physicians of Mercy, to lay down new guidelines which he scrupulously follows. However, Feiger stated that Kvorkian found it difficult to follow his exacting guidelines due to persecution and prosecution, adding he's proposed these guidelines saying this is what ought to be done. These are not to be done in times of war, and we're at war. In a 2010 interview with Sanjay Gupta, Kvorkian stated an objection to the status of assisted suicide in Oregon, Washington, and Montana. Only in those three states is assisted suicide legal in the United States, and then only for terminally ill patients. To Gupta, Kvorkian stated, What difference does it make if someone is terminal? We are all terminal. In his view, a patient did not have to be terminally ill to be assisted in committing suicide, but did need to be suffering. However, he also said in that same interview that he declined four out of every five assisted suicide requests on the grounds that the patient needed more treatment or medical records had to be checked. Art Career Kvorkian was a jazz musician and composer. The Kvorkian Suite, A Very Still Life was a 1997 limited release CD of 5,000 copies from the Lucid Subjazz label. It features Kvorkian on the flute and organ playing his own works with the Morpheus Quintet. It was reviewed in Entertainment Weekly Online as weird, but good-natured. As of 1997, 1,400 units had been sold. Kvorkian wrote all the songs but one. The album was reviewed in jazzreview.com as very much groovinous except for one tune, with stuff in between that's worthy of multiple spins.
he was also an oil painter. His work tended toward the grotesque and macabre. He sometimes painted with his own blood, and had created pictures such as one of a child eating the flesh off a decomposing corpse. Of his known works, six were made available in the 1990s for print release. The Ariana Gallery in Royal Oak, Michigan is the exclusive distributor of Kvorkian's artwork. The original oil prints are not for release. Sludge metal band Acid Bath used his painting for He Is Raised as the cover art for their 1996 album Pagan Terrorism Tactics. In 2011, his paintings became the center of a legal entanglement between his sole heir and a Massachusetts museum. Trials Kvorkian was tried four times for assisting suicides between May 1994 to June 1997. With the assistance of Fijer, Kvorkian was acquitted three times. The fourth trial ended in a mistrial. The trials helped Kvorkian gain public support for his cause. After Oakland County Prosecutor Richard Thompson lost a primary election to a Republican challenger, Thompson attributed the loss in part to the declining public support for the prosecution of Kvorkian and its associated legal expenses. Conviction and imprisonment on the November 22, 1998, broadcast of CBS News 60 Minutes, Kvorkian allowed the airing of a videotape he made on September 17, 1998, which depicted the voluntary euthanasia of Thomas Uke, 52, who was in the final stages of Lou Gehrig's disease. After Uke provided his fully informed consent, a sometimes complex legal determination made in this case by editorial consensus. On September 17, 1998, Kvorkian himself administered Thomas Uke a lethal injection. This was highly significant, as all of his earlier clients had reportedly completed the process themselves. During the videotape, Kvorkian dared the authorities to try to convict him or stop him from carrying out mercy killings. Uke's family described the lethal injection as humane, not murder. On March 26, 1999, Kvorkian was charged with second-degree murder and the delivery of a controlled substance, administering the lethal injection to Thomas Uke. Because Kvorkian's license to practice medicine had been revoked eight years previously, he was not legally allowed to possess the controlled substance. As homicide law is relatively fixed and routine, this trial was markedly different from earlier ones that involved an area of law in flux, assisted suicide. Kvorkian discharged his attorneys and proceeded through the trial representing himself, a decision he later regretted. The judge ordered a criminal defense attorney to remain available at trial as standby counsel for information and advice. Inexperienced in law but persisting in his efforts to represent himself, Kvorkian encountered great difficulty in presenting his evidence and arguments. He was not able to call any witnesses to the stand as the judge did not deem the testimony of any of his witnesses relevant. After a two-day trial, the Michigan jury found Kvorkian guilty of second-degree homicide. Judge Jessica Cooper sentenced Kvorkian to serve 10 to 25 years in prison and told him. Kvorkian was sent to a prison in cold water, Michigan to serve his sentence. After his conviction, and subsequent losses on appeal. Kvorkian was denied parole repeatedly until 2007. In an MSNBC interview aired on September 29, 2005, Kvorkian said that if he were granted parole, he would not resume directly helping people die and would restrict himself to campaigning to have the law changed. On December 22, 2005, Kvorkian was denied parole by a board on the count of 7-2 recommending not to give parole. Reportedly terminally ill with hepatitis C, which he contracted while doing research on blood transfusions, Kvorkian was expected to die within a year in May 2006. After applying for a pardon, parole, or commutation by the parole board and Governor Jennifer Granham, he was paroled for good behavior on June 1, 2007. He had spent eight years and two and a half months in prison. Kvorkian was on parole for two years under the conditions that he not help anyone else die, or provide care for anyone older than 62 or disabled. Kvorkian said he would abstain from assisting any more terminal patients with death, and his role in the matter would strictly be to persuade states to change their laws on assisted suicide. 
he was also forbidden by the rules of his parole from commenting about assisted suicide. Activities after his release from prison Kvorkian gave a number of lectures upon his release. He lectured at universities such as the University of Florida, Nova Southeastern University, and the University of California, Los Angeles. His lectures have not been limited to the topic of euthanasia. He has also discussed such topics as tyranny, the criminal justice system, politics, the Ninth Amendment to the United States Constitution and Armenian culture. He appeared on Fox News Channel's Your World with Neil Cavuto on September 2, 2009 to discuss health care reform. On April 15 and 16, 2010, Kvorkian appeared on CNN's Anderson Cooper 360 Deg. Anderson asked, You are saying doctors play God all the time? Kvorkian said, Of course. Anytime you interfere with a natural process, you are playing God. Director Barry Levinson and actors Susan Sarandon and John Goodman, who appeared in You Don't Know Jack, a film based on Kvorkian's life, were interviewed alongside Kvorkian. Kvorkian was again interviewed by Cavuto on Your World on April 19, 2010 regarding the movie and Kvorkian's worldview. You Don't Know Jack premiered April 24, 2010 on HBO. A film premiered April 14 at the Ziegfeld Theatre in New York City. Kvorkian walked the red carpet alongside Al Pacino, who portrayed him in the film. Pacino received Emmy and Golden Globe awards for his portrayal, and personally thanked Kvorkian, who was in the audience, upon receiving both of these awards. Kvorkian stated that both the film and Pacino's performance brings tears to my eyes, and I live through it. Congressional Race 2008 On March 12, 2008, Kvorkian announced plans to run for United States Congress to represent Michigan's 9th Congressional District against eight-term Congressman Joe Nolenberg, a Bloomfield Hills, Central Michigan University professor Gary Peters, D. Bloomfield Township, Adam Goodman, L. Royal Oak, and Douglas Campbell. G. Fendale. Kvorkian ran as an independent and received 8,987 votes, 2.6 percent of the vote. Illness and death Kvorkian had struggled with kidney problems for years. He was diagnosed with liver cancer, which may have been caused by hepatitis C, according to his longtime friend Neil Mikol. Kvorkian was hospitalized on May 18, 2011, with kidney problems and pneumonia. Kvorkian's condition grew rapidly worse and he died from a thrombosis on June 3, 2011, eight days after his 83rd birthday at William Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak, Michigan. According to his attorney, Mayor Morganroth, there were no artificial attempts to keep him alive and his death was painless. Kvorkian was buried in Whitechapel Memorial Park Cemetery in Troy, Michigan. Legacy Judge Thomas Jackson, who presided over Kvorkian's first murder trial in 1994, commented that he wanted to express sorrow at Kvorkian's death and that the 1994 case was brought under a badly written law aimed at Kvorkian, but he attempted to give him the best trial possible. Mario Silvera, a professor of internal medicine, said she became involved with palliative care partly because of the attention Kvorkian brought to the complex issue of unintended suffering, adding that he had a tremendous impact and fueled the public awareness of unintended suffering and the need to address it. Jeffrey Figer, Kvorkian's lawyer during the 1990s, gave a speech at a press conference in which he stated, Dr. Jack Kvorkian didn't seek out history, but he made history. Figer said that Kvorkian revolutionized the concept of suicide by working to help people end their own suffering, because he believed physicians are responsible for alleviating the suffering of patients, even if that meant allowing patients to die. John Finn medical director of palliative care at the Catholic Street Johns Hospital, said Kvorkian's methods were unorthodox and inappropriate. He added that many of Kvorkian's patients were isolated, lonely and potentially depressed and therefore in no state to mindfully choose whether to live or die. Derek Humphrey, author of The Suicide Handbook, Final Exit, said Kvorkian was too obsessed, too fanatical, in his interest in death and suicide to offer direction for the nation. Howard Markle, a medical historian at the University of Michigan, 
said Kvorkian was a major historical figure in modern medicine. The Catholic Church in Detroit said Kvorkian left behind a deadly legacy that denied scores of people their right to humane deaths. Philip Nitschk, founder and director of Right to Die organization Exit International, said that Kvorkian moved the debate forward in ways the rest of us can only imagine. He started at a time when it was hardly talked about and got people thinking about the issue. He paid one hell of a price, and that is one of the hallmarks of true heroism. The epitaph on Kvorkian's tombstone reads, He sacrificed himself for everyone's rights. Publications Kvorkian, Jack, 1959 the Story of Dissection. Philosophical Library. ISBN 978-1-258-07746-4, Kvorkian, Jack, 1960. Medical Research and the Death Penalty, A Dialogue. Vantage Books. ISBN 978-0-9602030-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-